John Coltrane, Thelonious Monk, and Claude Debussy were hip to it. Let's learn more about the whole tone scale. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses, please do subscribe. Be sure to hit the like button to make your whole tone scales a little more wholesome. Now let's get to work. Today is part four in our ongoing series on saxophone scales, and today we are covering, of course, the whole tone scale. But first things first, go to the link down below and download the worksheet. We've got play along, call and response exercises for alto and tenor, and all the exercises are on the included worksheet. So before we get to the exercises and start playing, let's talk about what is the whole tone scale and where do we use it. So let's head over to the piano and see it laid out on the keyboard. And here you will notice there are no half steps, only whole steps, whole tones, hence the whole tone scale. And because there's no half steps, there's actually only six unique notes in the scale. A major scale has seven unique notes, the eighth being the repetition of the octave. Same thing with the whole tone scale here. We have six separate notes with the seventh note being the repeated octave. So fewer notes than a major scale, and there's also no half steps, which gives it a very unique sound. Take a listen. Now, interestingly enough, also because there are no half steps, there's no leading tones. None of the tones particularly pull one way or the other. If you have a firm tonic in your head as you're playing, you might hear it want to wander back to the tonic, but interestingly enough, while you're playing the scale, you notice you can start on any of the notes and finish on any of the notes, and it sounds pretty cool because there is no half step, no leading tone pulling it in one direction or another. So whether you're playing French Impressionistic music or modal jazz of the 1960s, it's a really interesting scale that we can get quite a bit of use out of. So let's talk about how to practice this. And first things first, let's take a look at the two scales and talk about fingerings. So nothing out of the ordinary. We do have a B flat in only one of the scales because, well, you can figure that reason out. And here we will in fact want to use the biz key. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Biz key in the whole tone scale, let's go. Yes, Barry the Bizkey, it's your time to shine. Now, because of the symmetric nature of the scale, it feels very exotic and might feel very strange underneath your fingers. It may be some patterns as we practice this that you've never really done before, which means we need to be careful in how we practice. So let's talk about a couple of quick tips and strategies of how to practice these cool scale patterns. First things first, print out the worksheet. I don't want you always looking at the computer screen while you play. I always encourage my students to print off the sheet music, put it on a music stand, because that recreates what you do in real life when you play with other musicians. And that's really the greatest joy of music, collaborating with other musicians. You don't want to get in the habit of always following on the screen, certainly not those programs that highlight the notes as they go along. Those are training wheels, and you want to get rid of those as soon as possible, like now. So print off the music and look at it on a music stand, because there, we can mark in our accidentals. Remember, any accidental you see carries through the measure. So grab a pencil and mark in all your accidentals. Just go ahead and do it first things first so you don't learn incorrect notes. It's much more difficult to unlearn wrong notes than to learn them correctly in the first place. Second strategy, instead of trying to learn the entire pattern all at once, break it down into little beat grouping chunks. Practice a little bit, add a little bit more, then put them together. Add a little bit more, then put all three together. We want to learn in a cumulative fashion, building one success on top of the other, rather than trying to digest one huge chunk at a time. Now next, as with all these scales and scale patterns in this series of scale studies on saxophone, always practice your scales slurred first to make sure we've ironed out any inefficiencies in technique. And once you feel comfortable slurred and have it relaxed, then add in the articulation. <laughs> If 
finally, it's a good idea to start to memorize not only these scales, but some of these scale patterns for later use in improvisation. It's hard to inject some language into a solo if you have to read it off a sheet of music. So, memorization is a skill. You have to develop it just like any other skill. Think of it as a memory muscle you're building. It's not literally what's happening, but it's a decent metaphor. So, think about it as a muscle that we're working out. You do it a little bit each practice session, learning to memorize a little bit more and more. So here's a tip to help out. Don't try to memorize an entire phrase at the beginning. Just memorize half a phrase. Take a look at it, then close your eyes and see if you can remember at least half the phrase. <laughs> Now remember, if you're not used to memorizing music, it takes time. When I was primarily a classical musician, I did most of my playing reading off a sheet of music. Then when I switched over to mostly jazz playing, it was difficult for me. Learning jazz standards by ear and keeping them memorized, not looking at the sheet music, it wasn't easy. But the more I did it, the easier it got. It will be the same way for you, I promise. Just be consistent and patient and believe in yourself that it will happen. Dr. Wally believes in you. Now let's get you playing. We have call and response exercises for alto and tenor saxophone. So first things first, I want you to learn it off the sheet that you've already printed out and marked in your accidentals, your carry through accidentals. Learn them slowly and cleanly with the metronome. Don't do the play alongs first. I know play alongs are fun. I want you working by yourself with the music stand and a metronome first. Then when they're comfortable, come back to this video and then do the play along. And when you're ready to do the play along, feel free to do it slower. In the settings, the gear icon on desktop and the three dots on mobile, you can slow it down. Practice for ease and accuracy. Don't try to build too much speed too quickly. <laughs> Now at this point, your playing should feel at least 20% more exotic 
Congratulations. So we've got some very cool things coming up in the following weeks. We're going to take a brief pause on our scale series and start to do some, well, I'm going to make it a surprise, but I really do think you want to check back next week. I intended to have a Christmas present for you back in December. It's a little bit belated. I think you're going to be very pleased. It's nothing to sell or nothing to buy. It's just something that I think you're really going to like that I'm excited to have you here with your weekly lessons. So uh, actually today is, if you're watching this video today, well, I guess it's today wherever you are, but today when I'm recording this, it is Valentine's Day. So I do wish you the happiest of Valentine's Day. And remember, Dr. Wally loves you. <laughs> no go practice, you little scamp.